So we've just checked out Ant-Man and the Wasp, and I think the last film that I saw with two characters in the title was Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Oh. And thank goodness this film is of a higher quality than <laughs> that film, because wow we. Oh no. Well, well, well. If it isn't Shark Boy and Lava Girl. It takes two to make a thing go right. So Ant-Man and the Wasp is our first post-Avengers Infinity War Marvel film. It is, of course, about Ant-Man and the Wasp. Buzz, 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 buzz. And it is directed by Peyton Reed, who did the first film after taking over after the whole thing with Edgar Wright, who did kind of Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz and Baby Driver after his whole film fell apart. They brought him on to finish that one off and kind of make it happen. Not finish it off. They brought him in to get it done. He's back here. He's having a lot more fun. It's a lot more flexible this time. The movie overall feels a lot more fun and flexible. So Ant-Man and the Wasp takes place before Avengers Infinity War, for anyone who is wondering, and it kind of uh, looks at the character of Michael Douglas's wife and kind of what happened to her because she ended yeah. up in the quantum realm in the first film and uh yeah now they're just kind of trying to figure out what's going on what happened her. to the Hank Pym scenario before like what we, we had stuff that was set up in the first film and they've kind of capitalized on it here and what I want to say about that is it makes for I, I cannot believe I'm saying this but Ant-Man and the Wasp has what feels like a really unique story inside this world now I don't think the film is particularly fantastic or anything I, I think it's fine I think it's an enjoyable experience I think it's gonna be hard to deny that it is a fun movie but what I can't deny is the fact that the story actually feels kind of original and the way it's delivered feels really fresh for this universe. Yeah, it feels grounded, uh, grounded in kind of Earth's reality and uh, given the fact that the last few MCU films have kind of been kind of quite bigger out there bigger or bigger, yeah. pretty extraordinary, like I mean, yes, this film kind of delves into quantum physics, etc. Et so forth <laughs> and well, that's not very grounded, but it feels real, it feels relatable. I mean, like our lead character has a daughter and everyone, most people can kind of relate to that. I mean, I. I don't have yeah, I, Neither of us can relate to we that, can't actually. Relate to oh, that. my no. God. But we can relate to parents and kids and being a part of a family. And so, like, He's it's just, just an everyday guy. Scott Lang is just guy. an everyday dude. And on that note, let's just talk about the characters. I think Ant-Man succeeds from just having a really fun collection of characters. Obviously, all the MCU films by this stage have narrowed in on having really great characters. And that is why this universe continues to thrive. But here, obviously, you've got a great cast. I mean, Evangeline Lilly as... Uh, Hope Van Dyne is absolutely fantastic. She's got this no-nonsense attitude that acts as like a really, really good counter to uh, Paul Rudd's Scott Lang because you can't really have both of them being kind of jokey and, and whatnot. She's really kind of like down the line with everything and it just creates a really fantastic contrast. Even better when you add in uh, Michael Douglas as Hank Pym. They've just got a really great dynamic between the three of them. Especially given that Michael Douglas and Evangeline Lee and even Michelle Pfeiffer to an extent are known for their more dramatic roles and even Lawrence Fishburne here who pops up. It's great to kind of see a balance between them with someone who like Paul Rudd, who's obviously absolutely incredible with comedy. And so of course we get a very uh MCU toned film where we have a beautiful mix of kind of comedy and emotion. And obviously we cannot forget Michael Pena here who was absolutely fantastic in the first film and he steals every scene he is in here. I'm at the point where I'm like, hey, just give this guy his own solo spin-off movie uh, just to see what would happen because he's honestly so incredibly entertaining uh, and he really just elevates every single scene he's in. We also have Walton Goggins playing one of the villains here. Uh, he's also particularly good. I think pretty much everyone in this cast actually does a really solid job and, you know, that's ex what you're expecting to get in these films these days and everyone definitely delivers. Even Hannah John Cameron who is our new character as Ghost as well she delivers a very good performance in kind of quite a tricky role but it's well balanced and it makes sense. This movie takes this idea that uh, Marvel has a villain problem and really kind of flips it and spins it in really interesting ways. I think what this movie does in terms of the way it works through its character dynamics is really fantastic. The entire film comes down to that. It does kind of have a bit of a I don't know uh, the, the beginning like half an hour feels a bit kind of of air and then once the movie kind of finds its feet and the plot kicks into gear it sets up this really fantastic thing where all of its characters have clear wants and desires they all have different things different responsibilities uh, different objectives and watching those kind of cross over and interweave across the film's remaining runtime is the true highlight of this movie yeah the pacing of this film is absolutely terrific and i think it comes down to the fact that there's really just one plot device there's one story arc here that like they're all going for and then it really becomes about who gets invited to this party? Yeah, and who like, gets there first? Who's got things? Who's who's got stuff working? Which is out cool. For which like allows for these great dynamics and just kind of a really fun, enjoyable, entertaining film that really flies by. Get it? It's it's a, a it's, wasp it's, spy. It's, it's a what? Wasp spy. I wasn't gonna say that. I said it. and It sucked. <laughs> Whoops. Why are you bringing misery to our planet?
And with that sense of pacing, it definitely gives Peyton Reed a greater sense of energy as a director. I still think he's a kind of uh, uninteresting filmmaker in a lot of ways. I think a lot of his style in the movie's flat, and considering we've kind of had a bit more kind of oomph injected into the MCU lately, it does feel kind of disappointing that so much of this film is shot in just a very, very flat manner. But that being said, when he does need to rise to the occasion, when he does need to inject a scene with a high level of energy, or kind of tap into an emotion, he gets the job done. This isn't something that is going to bother anyone, because the story on its own, as I've said, is just really solid. It is an entertaining movie, but it does definitely feel a little bit uninspired from a storytelling standpoint. I feel like you could push a lot more out of the scenes that we've got, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really impact the movie too much. It just probably won't make me remember it too much aside from like the story. It's kind of just exists. I do agree to the fact that yeah, it definitely exists and I mean like I'm not sure how much of this film I will retain. I definitely will retain a lot more of it than the first one because I yes. enjoyed it a hell of a lot more. But I think, you know, Peyton Reed shines in other areas compared to other directors that we've seen uh, handle the MCU. He's probably very similar to someone like Taika Waititi who just kind of handles his comedy quite well. I think Peyton Reed handles it on the script whereas Taika Waititi is more about improvisation. But it's kind of good as well to see that the MCU can uh, shine with so many different directors as well. And after coming out of this film as well, I think it's just absolutely ridiculously impressive that Marvel can tune out films like this of such a quality constantly, over and over again. You know, yeah. like, despite there might be a few flaws here and there with each film, they are just of such a ridiculously high standard. And given the fact that we live in a day and age of blockbusters and blockbusters failing as well, Marvel are constantly succeeding. And I think, you know, it shows here again, even a film that kind of feels a bit like a B movie and a bit like a side story. Ha! Or an ant movie. So yeah, with Ant-Man and the Wasp, I'm not saying I loved it, I didn't really even think it was that great. It was just a fine movie that I was able to enjoy for the time it was running because it's actually really competently made. It has a lot of great ideas. It has just a really good story with great characters. I don't think it's particularly inspired in the filmmaking, but that's the thing. It's just a good story. When a good story is a good story, that's a good thing. So that was our review of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Have you seen it yet? Did you like did it? Did you hate did it? Did you like this video? Of course you did. Crave more banter? If so, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel down there somewhere. And don't forget to check us out on Twitter and Instagram at Breaking Banner. And you can also support us on Patreon to help us out with everything. Thank you. I will see you guys in the next video.